Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So this is Sophie from Manila, Philippines. So in case this is your first time watching my vlog, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more travel vlogs. Currently, I am in Turkey, so we are in the second leg of our trip. So for our first stop, it was in Istanbul. So I already have a video of that, so I'll link it down below. And now we are in... Cappadocia! So you might know Cappadocia for their hot air balloons. I actually discovered the place through Instagram through their very Instagrammable photos. So we're here for a total of two and a half days. So we arrived here from Istanbul at around 10 a.m. and we left our hotel in Istanbul at around 6 a.m. The travel time from Istanbul to Cappadocia is about an hour but we got stuck in the airport because the airport is quite small so they only have like two carousels for the baggage claim and from the airport to our hotel it took us about one hour. So the hotel that we booked is called Goreme Kaya Hotel. I'm not sure how you say it, Gorem or Gorem. So we're currently staying in this town in Cappadocia. So I'll show you on the map. We are located over here. So it's a very popular spot in Cappadocia. So I'll be giving you guys a quick tour of our hotel. at TK Travel. So I'm here with my family. We're booking last minute tours. So I mentioned in our Istanbul trip that we weren't really prepared with our itinerary. So everything that we're doing is on the spot. Like this one, we're booking all our tours just today. So 2K Travel offers different tours. So we booked an ATV tour for later this afternoon and hot air balloon tour tomorrow. Hopefully we can make it because it really depends on the weather conditions. And we're also in luck because this is the first time they're hosting a hot air balloon festival here so super duper exciting and quite scary at the same time <laughs> So the hotel we're staying at is not the typical cave hotel that you find here in Cappadocia but it's pretty nice because it has a really big lobby. They have a spa, they have a pool, and they also have a restaurant that's overlooking a good view. We're here at the ferries, we're just chilling and look at our view. It's unreal guys. <laughs> about to start our ATV tour so we're visiting several valleys. I'm quite scared because Martin's going to be driving. It's not a guided tour so you have to trust the person on the wheel. We made it to our first stop and it's amazing like grabe sobrang ganda. It's crazy. This is unreal. Look at that. So we're here at our second stop. This is the Rose Valley. I'm not so sure why it's called Rose, but it's really, really nice, but it's quite dusty here already. So I'm wearing these sunnies na pang dust lang talaga siya. <laughs> I'm 
we're here at our third stop. There's a bunch of hotels here. It's like a small town. So this is a stopover so we can drink and eat. So we can stay here for about 20 minutes. So the two stops that we went to, we can only stay for 10 minutes. But obviously, we didn't stay for 10 minutes. Probably more because we took so many photos. So here, we're just going to take a break and check out this huge castle. It's enormous. So Steffi went on her own. I'm so proud of her. She's still alive. How do you feel? I'm dead. She's dead. You guys, she made it. I have no guts to do it. Mart, how do you feel about your ATV experience? It's fun. You really enjoyed it. Hindi ka nakamahulog like 10 times. Hindi naman. I swear, it's hard to overtake. But it's safe naman siya. As you can see, I'm still in one piece. How's your ATV experience, passenger? Oh, you have to wear glasses, sunglasses. sunglasses. We're at okay. our last and final stop. This is called Love Valley. There's one point here that's facing the sunset. You can watch the sunset. So it's almost 8.30 p.m. So the sun sets really, really late here. And then you can also have a good view of this. I'm not sure what it's called, but it's really beautiful. Our ATV tour, super duper worth it. We got our tour at 2K Travel and it cost 20 euros for one person and 25 euros for two persons in one bike. So I'll link it down below. And it's really an experience that you must try here in Cappadocia. It's a really great way to see the valleys, the landscapes, and really enjoy the sunset at the end of the day. Super hey, we're leaving! Here's my ride. <laughs> We're having dinner here at a restaurant called Haruna. So it's really, really nice. It's overlooking the city lights. They have indoor and outdoor seating, but we decided to stay inside because all the seats outside were taken because, of course, that's what people go here for. So we didn't have a reservation. It was just recommended by one of the friends we met in the ATV tour. So I ordered melon shake and it's really fresh. That's Martin's and the beer. Pulo beer siya dito. So look at the place. You can see the city lights. Really nice. Really romantic. And also a good place to end the tour. So I really recommend going to this restaurant. And the prices are pretty high on the high side. But I think it's worth it. Like the ingredients that they use. They seem that they're very premium and high quality. Like this one doesn't taste like it's made of syrup only. I'm trying this popular dish here. It's called halloumi. It's like fried cheese. What kind of cheese is this, ma? Halloumi. Halloumi. One to one yung fat protein ratio. Ano daw? What? 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 One to one yung fat protein ratio. I don't know what that means, but it's good. It's like salty. Doesn't taste like cheese. Food here is really good as and it's really like not your ordinary Turkish. I think one of the better meals we've had so far. This is the best. This is the best na daw. okay lang yung mga food na we've been trying out here. But this one's good. So, halloumi is a kind of cheese. It kind of tastes like hard feta cheese that's more salty and more flavorful. It's in more... one bite, talagang like wow, it's amazing. You have to try it here, particularly in this restaurant. Best meal we've had here, turkey. 
Good morning, guys. So it's day two. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so bangan. It's currently 4:20 a.m. So we're waiting for a pickup. We're going to the hot air balloon, and we only had three hours of sleep because we got home super late. And I'm so sleepy, pa. I don't know how we are able to wake up. So hopefully the weather is good that we'll be able to ride balloons. So there are also other people. Like you can see there's a tour bus there, so that's a separate tour. So it's really popular here. our tour with a champagne party so we're gonna have a toast later on i would super duper recommend that you do it it's like a once in a lifetime experience just don't think about the money just do it <laughs> back at our hotel it's around 6 a.m. and we're having breakfast buffet so this so far is the best breakfast because we've always had Turkish breakfast which is mention hakasawana so they have oatmeal bread everything complete talaga so excited to eat. so the good thing about our hotel is that the breakfast is as early as around 6 a.m. So our hotel in Istanbul, the breakfast was at 8.30 a.m. So good thing na lang that they start early so that right after the hot air balloon, you can go to the hotel and enjoy breakfast with this beautiful view. Yeah. Really nice. Good morning again guys! So time check, it's 10 a.m. and I just woke up from a quick nap. So before we head out for a tour, I just wanted to talk to you guys more about the hot air balloon experience we had earlier this morning because my brain wasn't functioning anymore. It was way, way too early. So we booked our hot air balloon experience with the same tour agency that we booked our ATV experience yesterday. So that's 2K Travel. And our tour package cost 150 euros. So that's equivalent to about 9,000 pesos. So at first, we're already ready to not experience it anymore because the hotel quoted us around 200 euros. But when we went to 2K Travel and found that it was 50 euros off, we decided to just go for it since it's a lot cheaper. So for that price, it already includes insurance, flight certificate, hotel pickup and drop off, and a small champagne party at the end of the flight. I wouldn't say exactly that it's safe because there's no like seatbelt or safety harness. You literally just climb inside the balloon and 
and you're just standing. And then inside the balloon, you're about 20 people. So it's not like a solo or group tour. So I would recommend that you try to climb in early on so that you get the best seats, which is at the end of the balloon so that you have an unobstructed view of the skyline and the balloons. So the ride is only one hour and it feels a lot quicker when you're on the flight. I would say that it's really one of the most memorable experiences of my life and it's something that you really have to try here in Cappadocia. I think your experience here wouldn't be the same without it. And just don't think about the price. Just think of it as a once in a lifetime experience that you have to really do. So no regrets and I really recommend it. It's 100% worth it. I would also recommend doing it here in Cappadocia because the view is so amazing. Like the valleys are really, really beautiful up in the air. And as compared to like other places where you can do hot air balloon, I think this is one of the top places that you have to do it because it's just breathtaking and it's just so beautiful. Like I have no words anymore. <laughs> So we're back on the tour bus. This is huge. Like we booked a private tour last minute again through the same travel agency, 2K Travel. So we're getting a private tour that's pretty customized because we started much later than the usual tour time. These are actually not rocks but dust that have accumulated over the years. Oh, I guess a lot. The first stop at our tour is the Goreme Open Air Museum. So as the name suggests, it's outdoors. So make sure to bring an umbrella. And the entire place is uphill. So you'll do a lot of walking here. So be prepared. So here you'll be able to know more about their culture, their history. And you'll find a lot of churches and monasteries. So we're visiting most of the spots. There are actually so many places to visit here so it's really really huge so maybe you can plot which ones you want to visit Okay, so we're at the end of the open air museum so I would recommend if you come here around 12 noon if you want to avoid the crowd so our tour guide said that a lot of tour buses come here early morning so if you want to avoid that then come during the non-peak hours so you'll probably spend about 40 minutes here and I would recommend still coming here because it's one of the top spots here in Goreme. So the entrance fee here is 45 lira per person, but since we got the tour package, it's already included in the fare. So just 50 meters away from the Open Air Museum is this UNESCO heritage site. It's called Buckle or Tokali Church. So no photos or videos are allowed, but what you can expect, it's a bigger version of the churches we found in the museum earlier. lunch at Han restaurant. It's a restaurant that offers buffet and there are a lot of tourists there so I think it's where usually tour buses bring their guests. Now we're heading to our next stop. Before that I just wanted to share some interesting facts that I learned today about Cappadocia. So the word Cappadocia comes from a Persian word which means the land of beautiful horses. So it used to be under the Persian Empire. And fun fact also about the hot air balloons. So they've been flying hot air balloons for 29 years already. And the best time to fly is during spring and autumn. So we are just right. It's nearing summer already. So it might be hard to fly balloons during the hot temperature. They have flights daily. So you can imagine they're really experts with hot air balloon and in that span of 29 years they've only had one crash unfortunately but i guess you can say that it's safe if you're still hesitant it's always different than others you cannot do the same similar but slightly different after drawing we do color with all mineral pigments ali has been in this side almost 40 years oh. he will show us the shape one the Have you seen photo making before? We yeah, took less on. Okay, well then before we go. We're 
currently at Cappadocia Ceramic, so we're watching how pots are made. <laughs> it's a pottery workshop, so Steffi is going to try it out. She's our sacrificial lamb. What you like to make, Stefani? Fake one that you can just peel off. Then this is the real one. So we just finished our pottery workshop here in Cappadocia Ceramic. And guys, their art is amazing. Like everything is hand painted, handmade. Their designs are freehand and all original and all authentic. And they just actually revealed to us that a lot of the ceramics that are being sold in Istanbul, or most of them, are fake or they're printed. We have this like 3D printer already. It's not original and it's not handcrafted unlike what they have here. So I would recommend that you come here if you want to shop for like real ceramics and really good designs. Like they also offer customized artworks according to your liking. So drop by and check them out. We're here at Uchisar Castle. It's very similar to the sites we saw yesterday, but this one is more of like a Mykonos in Greece, but desert version, I think. <laughs> Art Center, so we're here to learn more about Turkish stones. So this is my mom's most awaited place because she's into those things. And we're learning about Zoltanite, which is I think the most popular stone here in Turkey. This place is huge, like there's so much jewelry and you can shop here for different accessories and different stones. So Zoltanite is either made artificially in the laboratory or you can find it naturally through mining. So it's very rare. It's actually very pretty. It's like a subtle light green color. The first time I've seen this kind of shade of gem, the government authorizes only special people to sell it. So people here are authorized to sell Zoltanite. Now at our next stop, this is called the Underground City. So I don't know what to expect, but it's like a cave. It's not underground. It's a good time to go if it's too hot because it's much cooler inside the caves. So we keep seeing this everywhere. This is actually called an evil eye. We're here at a cave. It's not underground as I mentioned earlier. So the good thing about these caves, or the cool thing about these caves, is that there are no insects or mosquitoes living or scorpions or snakes because of the temperature. So it's quite cold and it's very cool even if it's really hot outside. This is a door, so it closes to that one. Guys, if you're claustrophobic, you can't go here. Yeah. There's a lot of like small entrances. So if you're afraid, then I don't recommend it. This has 490,000 knots. This is 2,900. This has 200,000 knots. Uh, very good. Guys, so we're in carpet heaven. Legit. This is insane. The art is crazy. It's amazing. Like, they have no words. Ang ganda talaga. So Cappadocia or Turkey is well known for their carpet. So we visited this place, it's called Doku Art and they're like a museum where you can learn about the culture, tradition and the process of making carpet and then you can also buy if you can afford it. So the good thing about it is you learn so much about carpets and I realized that it's actually a dying art here and it's a great way to appreciate the art and the culture and history behind it all. 
can you believe that carpets actually last for almost 80 years? It's also an investment, so if you can afford it, I recommend that you drop by the shop because they sell 100% legit handcrafted carpets, unlike the ones that you find in Istanbul that might most likely be made by machines. So according to the owner or the manager, he said that instead of supporting a machine, support the people who are behind this dying art and try to save it. It's called Durban Valley. So it's very similar to the valleys we've been to yesterday. But the difference is the structures are more defined where you can use your imagination and creativity and think of what they are. That looks like a camel over there. So we are finally at our last stop of the day. where you can see more of the common structures but it's bigger it's like a big big park where you can see more of the fairy tale chimneys and the mushroom like structures so i'll show you the place So today is officially our last full day here in Cappadocia. So it's currently 11 a.m. and we're going to head back to the airport for our flight back to Istanbul at 2 p.m. I was not able to end the vlog yesterday because I was super duper exhausted. So I usually don't like taking tours but I would recommend getting one in Cappadocia. So tourism is one of their main industries here and you'll be able to see several travel agencies all lined up along the streets. So we just walked into one and the agency that we booked was 2K Travel. So I have no point of comparison because we didn't ask around anymore but we're very happy with our agency because yesterday we just booked on the same day and they were able to accommodate us and give us a private tour so we ended yesterday with the dinner at top deck restaurant so it's a highly reviewed place it's always fully booked but we managed to get a table immediately upon walking in so upon tasting the food we had really high expectations but we were so disappointed because we just found the food okay nothing special i think you're paying more for the ambiance and the setting because it's inside a cave but nonetheless we really had a good day yesterday. It was a full pack day but it was really worth it. Before I end the vlog, I just wanted to share three tips in planning your trip here in Cappadocia. My family and I had a pleasant stay in Bereme Kaya Hotel. So the hotel is very complete, the location is really good, it's accessible from the city, and the breakfast buffet is also very good. It has a wide variety of items. It's open as early as 6 a.m., which is good if you're planning to do the hot air balloon tour. The rooms, on the other hand, are big, but they're quite dim and dark. So another con is that they have unreliable Wi-Fi connection. But overall, it was okay. And given the chance, I would probably try to book another hotel in the future. Maybe some place with an Instagrammable rooftop where I can see the hot air balloon. Second tip is getting around. So the area that we stayed in is quite small and very walkable. I felt safe walking during the day and night, but for sightseeing, because there are not much taxis that pass by, I would recommend either you rent a car or you book a tour. I wouldn't really suggest doing a DIY tour. My third and final tip is the duration of your stay here. So we stayed here only for two full days, but I wish we stayed longer. So I would recommend about three to four full days to fully experience the place because there's so much more to do. There's so many tours activities and sites that we could have still seen if we stayed longer. So if you plan to visit Istanbul too, I would recommend about two days there and then more days here. There you go. I hope you guys enjoyed the vlog and hopefully I can visit Cappadocia again one day. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more travel vlogs and leave a comment and thumbs up down below if you enjoyed and found this helpful. Thanks for watching. Bye!